I'm Fran Kranz. I was the writer-director of Bleecker Street's Mass in 2021, and now I have the privilege of speaking with Laurel Parmet, the writer-director of The Starling Girl, Bleecker Street's new and next release, and congratulations. Thank you. That's really cool. Uh, I've watched the film twice. It's amazing. Really? I love oh. it. Uh, well, I figured, yeah, no, I, I, felt, I felt like I kind of needed to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dear Lord, I know I've given into lustful thoughts and actions, and I know that's wrong. What were you doing there? You cannot tell anyone right now, okay? It's incredible. I was just saying before, off camera before, I'm, je I'm jealous because you just had this premiere at Sundance. And then uh, this was, so that's January. We're sitting here doing this at the end of April. Your movie <laughs> comes out in two weeks. It must be like kind of a crazy whirlwind. And you were just saying you weren't even in photography this time last year. Yeah, we started shooting like I think May 16th of 2022. Um, and then, yeah. How long? How many days? It was 24 days. Um, okay. We wrapped like end of June and then it was like straight into post and working as quickly as we could and yeah. submitting to Sundance in like September. And... Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of like a early fall deadline. <laughs> yeah, it wow. was crazy. So you, you edited uh, uh, color, sound, all that good stuff in basically like two months. No, no, we didn't do color, sound. It was just picture. We did sound and color, God, in like end of December, beginning of January, wow. like we were very, very down to the line of like getting it to Sundance in time to screen. <laughs> wow, yeah. gosh, this makes me so jealous. This is crazy. I, um, you know, I'm I don't know so... if I would do it again on that timeline. It was really fast. Yeah, like... that's great. Yeah. So wait a minute. Okay. I, but I do want to know, I'm sure you kind of have to answer this question a lot, so forgive me, but like, it's so hard getting a movie, like it's so hard making a movie, let alone kind of one that's so sort of thoughtful and challenging. And I'm kind of curious, like how difficult was this to get made? Like when did, so you're shooting just recently, but mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, you know, who paid for this and can I have their phone number, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how did you, how did you, uh, how did you get this done? And like, how much of a struggle was it in the terms of the development, how you got this made? Like, like, how difficult was it to get to that, like, day one of shooting? And, and what were some of the, the sort of challenges or hurdles of that? It was, I mean, it was difficult, but I, I wouldn't say, like, out of the ordinary compared to other indie projects. It's yeah. always hard. You know, we went through the Sundance Labs, um, huh. so we had support from Sundance early on, which was really great. Um, and they're just, like, such fierce champions of the project. Um, and Amazing. we were actually, we were financed and cast and ready to go in 2020. Um, wow. And then... The world shut down? Yeah. That 2020? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, so that really like, uh, you know, threw a wrench in everything. Truthfully, I, what I will say is um, it was such a blessing in disguise. Sure. Like I kind of shudder to think what that film would have been if I had made it in 2020. <laughs> like, honestly, I, I was, think... I was playing Owen. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. I mean, I was... not even from a casting <laughs> standpoint, but just like I, those two extra years gave me more time to think about how I wanted to direct it and, and, sure. and work on the script. And the way that it came together the first time, it was all very quickly. And I, I sort of felt like, oh, I'm barely even just getting it. And like, yeah. I, I felt it slipping away from me a little bit yeah. and getting caught in like the, the machinations of just like, you know, film production. Sure, sure, sure. I just want to be helpful. Mrs. Stone here noticed that the bra that you chose is visible through your dress. Oh, oh. you're right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah, I'm so sorry. We're just looking out for you. Yeah. Teachable moment. And so, where is it shot? Where were you guys? Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. And what about some of just some of the castings? How did some mm -hmm. of the you know Eliza, Jimmy, oh, Lewis Pullman, like some of these kind of the key roles? Yeah. How did you? Uh, what was that process like? So Eliza was kind of like always my number one, yeah. um, and. She, I think I was writing Starling when she came out in Sharp Objects and yeah. I saw her and I was like, who is that? Like even physically just was exactly what I pictured for the role. And, and she just has one of those faces where you can just like stare at her 
watching a wall and like yeah. you're captivated um and she can really s straddle this like innocence and this ferocity this lightness and darkness that was like so important for the role um and lo very luckily my producer Kara was sh happened to be shooting a film with her when we were like going out to cast and Kara was like able to slip her the slip script the, yeah, that, yeah and she read it and responded to it and we like got on the zoom and just like fell in love that was and, it yeah. yeah um yeah. and then with Lewis it was like I actually hadn't I wasn't really familiar with his work and um my casting director put him in front of me and um I watched his stuff and was just super enamored with his talent and, and I met with him and he's just a really generous gentle person which yeah. I, I was important to me for this role because I didn't want Owen to be I didn't want his character to immediately like repulse the audience like yeah, I sure. wanted them to sort of get drawn in by him and and and, and understand why Jem falls for him and maybe have the audience themselves fall for him a little bit yeah. um, and he was just you know he's this non-threatening presence all right so who'd be in charge well I've been in the troop for a while All right, yeah. Your dad's got to be cool with it. I want to ask you about a little bit about the research because I read how you how you spoke with people in communities like this, right? Women in communities like this. So I definitely want to get there. But I, I, I'm so curious, kind of like coming out of this process, what you feel like you've learned about faith. I mean, maybe that's a giant question, but no, I love that. there's this 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 question comes up like a few times in the movie sort of phrased a little differently each time, but it's sort of like, is this, is this God, is this for God or vanity? Mm -hmm. Is this faith mm -hmm. or vanity? Mm -hmm. And I think like, I'm no like religious expert or whatever, but, but that's like fundamentally what has always been the eternal conflict in question, particularly within Christianity. It's like why it's splintered, this whole relationship between works and faith. Totally. How totally. do you express your faith? What yeah. does it look like? How do you, how do you see it in yourself? How do you see it in another person? Yeah. And like that, that is that feels like where the movie lives, and um, and then on top of that, this layer of sexual or or desire. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and you talk about I was reading you you speak about sexual agency, but there's this both in a spectrum in terms of faith and then how you how you express your faith through action and works, but also there's desire that we don't really have control over or don't completely understand, mm -hmm. but then we're expected to also have agency or correct agency, depending on like what your community or sort of the, the society you live in says. Mm -hmm. So you find these characters, I mean, that is kind of, I think, if that resonates with you at all. Yeah, no, it does, absolutely. I, I think that's kind of what this entire movie sort of lives in and it's fascinating and it's kind of heartbreaking and really difficult to watch. And so Owen, talking about Lewis Pullman and Owen, you know, yeah, I mean, I have my little cheat sheet. There's these moments that are really kind of like repugnant or reprehensible, you know. But I also, I believe we're meeting him at this moment where he he has been struggling long before the film starts and we get to meet him, uh, struggling with the, the doctrine he's supposed to uphold versus the faith that I think he actually has. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, don't, I don't believe he's some bad person. I believe he has an experience in Puerto Rico that's powerful, and he, I believe this is like a spiritual person. Anyway, I'm talking too much. No, 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 no. But I, 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 like, I like everything you're saying. <laughs> I'm, no. I'm really curious to hear you talk about that, and I'm sorry, that's like a, a kind of a crazy question. What have you learned about faith? But... But again, I think that's your whole movie exists in the most complex kind of gray area that that we all sort of have when it comes to beliefs versus how we conduct our lives. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I I learned a, so much about faith in my research and and in making this film. Um, you know, I I don't I didn't grow up in a community like this, yeah. um, and I ended up finding so much respect and admiration for faith and for religion that I don't know if I was expecting. Um, yeah. And there's something so beautiful, I think, about the idea of like, God is love and God gave me this body and I want to experience joy in his creation. And, yeah, and, I love that line. Yeah, um, yeah for Jem, her 
journey over the course of the film with her faith is that, you know, it's, it's never a rejection of God, right? And it's never saying that God doesn't exist or these Christians have it all wrong. It's really, it's, she, by the end of the film is starting to realize that she can define her relationship with God how she wants to versus mm -hmm. what she's been told it should be her whole life. Um, right. She, every time she dances and every time she enjoys it, she, she feels guilty and feels like, Oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it too much. I, it, it, making it about me. And then Owen has these, you know, more progressive Christian ideas, um, that say that like, well, actually like, it doesn't have to be one or the other. They're not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. Like because you are enjoying dance, you are enjoying God, and you yeah. are you are um, you are honoring Him by enjoying what He's given you. And and I just love that sentiment. And and then I really loved from a filmmaker's point of view that that was coming from such like a, a person who was doing such repugnant things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that yeah. like that really opened up her mind and, and kind of allowed her to start asking these questions. Did it happen in a, a messed up way? Yes. But also that's life. Yeah. And, no, I um, love that. I love in, in, and I think that's a beautiful sort of very, you know, positive message contained in the film, how closely sort of linked God and love are, sort of yeah. sort of faith and love. That, that, and I, I love that that moment because that, that idea where is this God, is this, is this for faith or God or is this vanity, that notion of it's no, it's you're experiencing joy. And, and so and, and maybe not every audience member will feel this way. Or, or disagree with me, but I found I found sort of his action. Not it's not that his actions are sort of forgivable, or or you, you can sort of reconcile them. It's like his 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 life is kind of destroyed by totally. being entangled with or this sort of. Uh, false adherence to a doctrine that he just like doesn't really believe in that's kind of you know sort of destroying and, and you see it with the dad with Jimmy Simpson a little mm -hmm. bit there's like this is a tiny little moment in the movie and it's kind of I don't want to say it's thrown away but when they're talking about Ben Taylor in the car mm -hmm. and he I, they're like oh he's he's like really close with God right listening to his music I, th I want to say right and then they're like, what do you think, Jim? What do you think of him, Jim? And she, I don't know if she How's answers or something. I mean, her dad, Jimmy Simpson, looks over and he's like, you don't have to know. You don't have to know. Mm -hmm. And it's this really sweet. Oh, I'm glad you caught that. <laughs> yeah, and it's, but, I, but I think that's like the entire movie. Like I, to me, that, that, that was such a beautiful, kind of profound, tiny moment because he believes this. Like he's offering really good advice but at the same time, he's he's stuck within. He's like tr struggling to believe this doctrine because it's sort of like, yeah, you don't have to know, but actually, like in a little bit, you do. Yeah. Y do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like at some point, you're gonna not just like have to know. You're gonna have to pretend like you know. You're gonna have to act like. So there's this. Um, it's torture, you mm -hmm. know, for for um, for a lot of these characters. So it it really brings out the humanity even while you're watching. You know, something like like when Owen the night after they kiss and he's like eating watermelon and walks away and you're like, what a jerk, <laughs> <laughs> what a bad person. You know, but at the same time, um, I can understand the sort of the 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 the, the kind of rack that these kind of that they, they some of these characters are on. Being, yeah, yeah, I'm glad. I mean, that was really important to me too was to bring humanity to these characters, right, yeah. and and have the audience be with them and be invested in them rather than like, you know, watching judgmentally from afar. Yeah. Um, and listen, patriarchal systems suck for everyone, right, not right. just the women. That's like, a, and yeah. that, that was an important thing to include in yeah. the film as well as how it affected the men. Yeah. Um, like there was an earlier draft, I think of mine where the, uh, Jem's father, like the character was, I, I had an older sister. Yeah. Instead, and and with those drafts, I was like, it was just it's just repetitive. Like I know how it affects the women. I want to see how it affects the the men. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, listen. Owen grew up in a world that is conducive for abusive behavior. Yeah. Um, that rewards it really, like in the in this patriarchal world, and and has so many it has lots of expectations for the men too and men have to live a certain way and, and you know the father has to provide and and has to be the head of the household and and the father is basically like mimicking like god to mm -hmm. to his um to his family mm -hmm. and and that's so much pressure and yeah. so yeah jimmy's character really stump struggles under that too like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. and under the that responsibility and like this image that he's he's supposed to 
this role he's supposed to play versus yeah. like what's in his heart. You excited about your courtship? Yeah. Do not tell your mama. Shh. Yeah, no, it's heartbreaking. I mean, speaking of, you you spoke with people who who live in these communities, right? And some some women, like uh, that's what I read. That you you sort of did some research, research and talked to people. And I'm kind of curious. Maybe you don't want to share. It's sort of the, you know the personal relationships you made. But you know, it, if they know what you're doing, did they know what you were working on? What the script was? What it meant to you? You know, you're getting a lot out of these conversations. I'm so curious what they got out of it. You know, how are they how are they not affected by you speaking to them and having a kind of in depth conversation about faith in these these societies? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, you know, I mean, I will say the majority of the women that I spoke to had like since left, since left, um, okay. like okay, more yeah. reclusive communities. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of them are still practicing evangelicals fundamentalists um yeah, yeah. but but are you know um not in such a like a secluded world and i was always super upfront about what i was doing yeah uh i never want to come at any of this from like dishonesty because that's just right um it feels terrible um yeah. and you know i think they the women that i spoke to especially the stuff that was more you know like the darker stuff the harder things to talk about they were women who had done some self-reflecting already and who were ready to sh were sh ready to share, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and, and wanted to share. And I think, you know, church abuse is rampant. It's everywhere. And um, I think very luckily, um, there's more and more people are talking about it and mm -hmm. being more mm -hmm. open about it. Yeah. Um, and so I think people want to be having these discussions. Yeah. And so you know, I think just approaching them with honesty and with respect, respect and, and yeah. say what we were doing, like, yeah. that was enough. And you do a beautiful, I mean, the movie's really, uh, it, it does, like, I think, like, a real beautiful job of sort of, it, 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 it's not judging, it doesn't feel like it's ever necessarily judging these these characters or or religion, I think, as you even as you even said. And I, but at the same time, you know, I'm really curious as this movie comes out, like just for you, like what what conversations this 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 gets you into, yeah. and discussions that you have because of this, because, I, you know, I this this doesn't feel like some rejection of of wholesale rejection of Christianity or faith. No, you know? I it, didn't want it to be. Yeah, and so. You know, there, it, it's it's this again. It's that kind of like eternal sort of struggle or con d debate of you know how do we find va values in this, these stories? Like what what's valuable to take uh, without and and what's that weird spectrum where it becomes you know faith becomes doctrine and doctrine becomes damaging? You right. Know? And 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 I I don't I don't think we can ever figure that out. Probably not. Do you know? <laughs> but but it's sort of it's wonderful to live there because I I just think there's so much integrity to the movie in the sense that you're not you're not like you said looking down on people or criticizing it. So I I hope you get into like pretty in depth you know sort of profound discussions about it all with people that actually you know have faith and stuff. Yeah, I mean that would be my hope. Yeah, it, I, yeah. I will say, I mean the screenings that we've had so far at festivals and stuff, it's been really positive responses and yeah. every screening I've had, I've had people come up to me who are either still in the church or who came from like you know a wow. more um, mm -hmm. conservative church and really emotional responses of like you know, it hit really close to home and I felt yeah. like really seen and um, just like really moved me. And yeah. that to me, um, it's kind of the highest compliment I could get just because I was so, so focused on like authenticity and, yeah. and making sure that I got that right. And, and, and yeah, I mean, like, you know, I wasn't, I just wasn't interested in coming at it from a place of judgment. Like, you know, like it or not, we, we live in a country that is hugely affected by cons conservative Christian thought. It affects 
my life day to day. It affects yeah. yours. It affects. And so I, you know, I came at it, I think, wanting to understand that better yeah. <laughs> just because it affects my life so much. And and in the process of doing the research, finding so much empathy and, and respect and admiration and, and wanting to show that side of it. Like, you know, we know about the repression. We've seen that. We know that it's problematic. So I wanted to show another side of like, you know, there's a lot of beauty in faith and, 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 and in tight knit communities and, 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 you know, yeah. Letting the audience see that. And, yeah. um, and yeah, I think you should be able to define your connection with God. There are lots of ways to connect with God, right? Yeah. There's not just one way. Yeah. Um, and I hope that people can experience that watching it too yeah even if even you like people who don't come from faith i'm not a practicing i I consider myself spiritual but i'm not a religious person and right just like to be reminded like there are more than there's many ways to connect with god or your spirituality and yeah i think just think that's a really cool message it is a good message (laughs) (laughs) thank you no it is It's, it's really great and i love it and um it 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 it's it's conveyed really beautifully and effectively um and 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 the story and so i think i think it would i i would imagine it's gonna it would it would resonate with a lot of people it's something i struggle with sometimes i worry i'm enjoying it too much for myself and like i'm doing it for vanity and not to praise him well you think god will strike you dead if you're enjoying dancing i mean your experience enjoying his creation, you know, and that's that's honoring him. I'm curious, like, so the the just kind of um, practical is not the right word, like design stuff, right? Yeah. Like, so what camera are you going to shoot on? What lenses? What's the wardrobe? What's the score? Mm-hmm. I'd love to talk about like how how did all these kind of decisions that you have to make? How did like the themes of the movie and everything that we just talked about? How mm-hmm. did they inform some of these choices, or oh, did yeah. they? You know, like if you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, they informed everything. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it was you know, the whole film is grounded in Jem's perspective, right? Yeah. The entire we're with her the entire time. So we, ex- I wanted the audience to experience the relationship, how she experiences it. Mm-hmm. So that means sometimes getting wrapped up in it and, and, and rooting for them to be together and then being like, oh God, wait, why did I want that? Like, what does that say about me? Um, and we had that in mind with ev- every camera decision that we made uh, yeah. was how do we root the audience with, you know, in her and in her perspective. Um, I wanted it to feel intimate and immediate so that we are, you know, the audience is with her moment to moment experiencing what she is experiencing. And what comes with that too, I think, was this sort of purposeful nonchalance, Mm -hmm. (laughs) camera wise, if that makes sense. Uh Um, Like not wanting to force an interpretation onto the audience. I wanted audiences to sort of like come to their own conclusions about things, yeah. be with her. But you know, there's a lot. Of, there's also a lot of drama in the film. It's a yeah. very there's some dramatic scenes, and I didn't want to visually lean in, into that and like make it feel overwrought or melodramatic, and just like let the thing let the things play out organically and and immediately and just i think that just would resonate more with audiences yeah no, um, but it, it's funny i mean I, the purposeful nonchalance is a great phrase but it, it, <laughs> it, it no it, it's totally right i mean it rings true because it's um there's a lot of scenes that kind of you feel sort of like like i don't think fly on the wall is necessarily the right sort of the perfect phrase yeah but you feel sort of plopped into some conversations um, where you really feel sort of intimately there, mm-hmm. but it is very directed and very sort of angled and from her perspective too, you know, and, and yeah. often suffocating ways. But just thinking of, you know, the woman who comes up to sort of mention that, you know, her shirt is revealing her bra, you know, you kind of feel like you're just kind of lumped in into this very awkward moment. But but it's it's also, you do a wonderful job of also feeling very much inter- internally with Jim too, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And the sort of the 
the kind of the shame and awkwardness of it and the, and and her obviously leaving right afterwards and and being so upset so it's you somehow you walk that line of both of those really beautifully the nonchalance yeah. and the purposefulness oh, i'm glad yeah <laughs> no, i mean it, it really works it's it makes a del- sense it's yeah. definitely a delicate dance and it's like yeah. i mean even just like for example like insert shots like there's barely any inserts in the film know, because yeah. like i think we just kept feeling like insert shots would like imbue too much meaning on a moment and we sure. like it, we rather just wanted yeah to just present things to the audience and yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and that extended to honestly with music like yeah. you know with I the, love the score, score. Yeah. I, I know i love the score yeah 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 too. i mean it's there's so not a, there's not like, i think i mean there's obviously music music and but there's you know there's a scene early on with her riding her bike it's really but yeah i wanted to ask you about that the score and how, what kind of conversations you had with your composer yeah um yeah our composer ben schneider did an amazing job yeah um and i you know it was kind of similar to camera work it was like i wanted to evoke an emotion but i didn't want to sway the audience too much one way or the other about what was unfolding on screen and mm-hmm. to let the audience sort of come to their own conclusions. And and also like, you know, like you'll have these really beautiful sort of like optimistic music cues, but there's, there's a layer of dissonance underneath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was something that we were always striving for. And I think part of that is to sort of mimic Jem and her what's going on inside of her and like oscillating between like this like euphoria that she's feeling in this relationship and also the extreme guilt that she's feeling yeah um, yeah no i love that that's and, great yeah and you know we wanted things to feel dreamy and, and yeah. hazy and um yeah. and yeah he did it he did a great job yeah with that. yeah 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 which is really contrasted well with sort of the, some of the stuff in the later half of the film that feels i think if i remember correctly like pretty raw and handheld and a little chaotic mm-hmm. like when when things sort of fall apart or when things are kind of exposed yeah you, you that 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 quality has been it's like been ripped out from underneath her a little bit it's rough oh. okay. here. stay here okay hey did you have like did you have um uh rehearsal at all we did yeah how did that what did that look like what we did was a we did a week of rehearsals um which was out there yeah in kentucky yeah. um which was so great necessary very yeah. necessary um just to get lewis and eliza comfortable with each other and to build that chemistry and and you and you you sorry uh you wrote it but mm-hmm. was there improvisation did you did the script change in the rehearsal process like how uh, yeah yeah kinda... no improv script definitely would change in rehearsals yeah, um sure. and, and I, I i usually do that just because you know you're hearing the words out loud and yeah. you're seeing the blocking and you're like I have three paragraphs that I don't need anymore. Sure. Like he can just say it with his face. Um, so just They're, stuff like that. Yeah, um, actors are like the the best editing process. Like oh, table reads or rehearsal. Yeah, I mean, I feel like all the significant changes to my movie w- were were made when I had actors saying it out loud. But yeah. some of the scenes, yeah, I don't want to say because I, 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 I yeah I feel like that word can kind of annoy me sometimes. Like what? was that or improv in the um, sense, but or in the sense that it's. Um, it feels so kind of organic and alive and messy, mm-hmm. you know, that it's sort of the audience kind of thinks like, oh, how could that be, you know, dialogue, you good. know? St- do you know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, but that's the that's the good thing. Yeah, so you kind of have some pride about it's like, no, want. I broke that. <laughs> um, yeah, but but um, you so this is sitting on a bit of a rehearsal, but some of the some of the some of the sort of the situations that you got. I mean, thinking about you know that so, that one scene where Owen comes back. To, to take her, you know, to be like, or not to take her, but to say, let's go. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I have spoilers and stuff here. But um, some of these things, I wondered, I wondered if you were kind of like, hey, let's just go, or this is more rehearsal, you know? It was, I mean, it was always a fine line. Yeah. We rehearsed all of the scenes. Yeah. I, I never, you know, we wouldn't over-rehearse. I didn't yeah. want to, like... If I felt like we were getting close, I'd be like, okay, good, stop, let, let's stop there and let's save it. Keep it, yeah. Um, but it was it was always about, like, um, playing with intention and just, like, I like to try out a bunch of different things when I'm shooting, especially with this film. Like, I wanted to have a lot of options in the editing room because, yeah. because of the delicate dance of their relationship. If I knew that, like, I would need the freedom to manipulate things or if I needed 
the audience to be more on Owen's side at one moment. Yeah, smart. Uh, versus, I just needed, you know, that flexibility and depending on whatever form the film was going to take. And yeah. so, I, you know, I had them, each take was pretty different. Right. So um, you're, you're thinking of perspective and audiences, sort of the, the audience feeling in your coverage in real time as you're shooting it. Sort of seeming like, we might need this yeah. if we have to lean this way. I think it's part yeah. of that and it's also just part of how I work with actors is I, I like to be surprised and I like to throw things at them and just like be like, I don't know, this might not work at all, this is super weird, but like yeah. do it as if you're like being stung by a bee. You yeah. know, like I don't know, yeah. just random yeah. shit like that to like inspire yeah. something <laughs> exciting and surprising. And so we I'm would just play that. around yeah. as much as we could play around and create a sense of play. Yeah. Um, just, I always found resulted in the best performances from them. Yeah, well, they're all amazing. So okay. yeah, you did a great job. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you chewing gum? Spit it out. <laughs> Spit it out. You're a director. This is, I know, your first feature. Um, I was uh, so naive as an actor. Like I was crying at the like the rap party, thinking I made a movie. Like and I had done nothing yet. You know what I mean? Like it's oh, like no, every <laughs> no 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 every like so much work is after like you rap principal yeah. photography, right? I had a friend, a director friend, said no, the f that's like vacation. Like the, do, the shooting the movie is like going on vacation, and then you have I all this. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, well, but no, I am like, I, I mean, especially having just heard sort of how you sort of kind of can work in real time and the sort of like, hey, let's do this. Let's just try this. I, I need all these options. What was what was editing like? Is this someone who is your editor? Do they, have you worked with them before on some of your shorts? Is there kind of are they doing it? Are they assembling it as you go? Like what kind of what what's your process there? And did you lose your mind at all in editing? And there's pretty not too bad. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So my editor is the brilliant Sam Levy. Oh right, okay, um, I saw his name in there. Yeah, yeah. He this is his first feature that he's cut. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I've never really, I've worked with editors a little bit, but my short films I cut myself. Oh, cool. Um, okay. So, first time really, yeah, collaborating with someone that much. How was that? Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, we were connected through a mutual friend, and in the meetings that we had beforehand, like, you know, hiring editors, I don't even know how, how you interview an editor. Like, yeah. it's just like, oh, I have um, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but we just really vibed. He had great yeah. taste. My friend who had worked with him before was like, trust me, he's an amazing editor. I really trust this friend of mine. And yeah. so I was, it was a little bit of a leap of faith. Sure. Um, and then he started a little bit on his assembly, like a cup, I think one or two weeks before we wrapped. But I kind of just hopped, jumped into it with him like pretty immediately after we shot. Yeah. And we just worked really well together. So just to go yeah. backwards for a second, um, you edited your short films. What was the decision behind not editing this yourself? Oh, I just too knew. Much, too, too much film. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Okay. I, I, I knew that I would get lost. Yeah, okay. I needed another perspective. I needed someone to, to fight with me about yeah. decisions. Smart. And um, and I love collaborating. That's like my favorite thing about filmmaking is collaborating. Yeah. I freaking love it. And so I wanted to find like a creative partner. So what about, um, so you mentioned, so he's doing a little bit of work during the shoot, but like, I was so I was so goddamn tired at the end of every day. I never if I could do it again or if I ever make another movie. I feel like you you kind of need to watch your dailies at least. You do. Yeah. So I was doing it. <laughs> or I do. No, but I, I yeah that's what I want to ask. So like because just the fact that you said you jumped right into it obviously sort of proves that you're pretty tireless when it comes to this stuff. So like I felt like I sort of needed little breaks for myself, but I probably you... should have taken breaks. <laughs> so well, I know it's insane that um, the movie's coming out in two weeks and you <laughs> shot it less than a year ago. Ben Taylor asked your dad about courting you. Huh? 
dad prayed on it and he feels that this is the path God wants for us. Yeah. Yeah, he's leading you to fulfill your purpose. How was Sundance? It was great. It was stressful. <laughs> <laughs> stressful. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, sure. Well, I heard someone was saying that actually, oh, it's like terrible for directors. They're just like pulled everywhere. Everyone says that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't terrible. It was uh, <laughs> It was a dream come true. Sure, sure. In many ways. Um, and so cool to see my film play in a theater with like 400 people and like hear 400 reactions was yeah, awesome. Amazing. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, you know, it's like you're doing press and you're getting whisked to these places and um, yeah. you're concerned about selling your movie. And like, yeah. so that's kind of, and, and reviews too. You're like, before the reviews come out, you're like, oh, what, what are they going to think? And yeah. so it's just yeah. a lot of emotion. It's a lot. And after the screening, it was great <laughs> and our reviews were great yeah. and I was feeling wonderful, but I was like, I need to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> I needed to, I like couldn't talk to anyone <laughs> for like a half hour and just, I was just feeling so many things, so overcome. Yeah. Um, so it was cool. It was awesome. I but bet. A lot. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's, it's a movie with like a ton of feeling too. I know. So a lot of big emotions. That. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, I, I think, yeah, you'd probably need like a, a moment for a comedy, but it's like a whole different thing, you know, that like well, with a film like this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I guess that, yeah, that being said, I mean, I sort of asked you about like kind of, or, or I was, I'm curious sort of like where this leads you in terms of the conversations you'll have, but I, I kind of, there's something I think I learned, I mean, I, I only did this once, so I, I don't know, but you know, you're, you're trying to tell this story, right? Like, this is the film, and I'm trying to tell the story, and there's pre-production, there's shooting, there's post and editing, but even the promotion and publicity of it, and even the conversations you have or after screenings and, like, where everything that's in front of you all feels like you're continuing to sort of tell the story. Oh, you know I mean? definitely. Like, it really just, you know, I feel like I've sort of learned that a little bit. Again, speaking Me about too. being naive as an actor, like, you just do your thing, but... But I, um, like, do you have things that you're sort of looking forward to or hopeful for? I mean, I know we sort of talked about what you'd like people to take away from it, but <clears throat> I don't know, as you approach, like, the, the, the uh, what's it called, release date? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, it's interesting. Everything you're saying, I'm, I'm experiencing In right now. Yeah. And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, learning how to talk about your work and your intention is a whole skill set on its own. Yeah. Like as a director, you know, when you're directing, you're not, when you're in it, you're not so intellectual about your decisions, right? Yeah. At least for me, like a lot of times it's, it's this more innate thing that's like driving my decisions. And now people are asking me like, well, why did you do this? Why did you do this? And I'm like, why did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. um, which is, is lovely. It's making me reflect back on my, my process and I'm learning so much about myself as a result. Yeah. Um, what about the film? Do you feel like you've learned something new about the film since long since it was locked and made? You sort of like, not in like, oh, I should have changed that or should have done that, but just sort of like, wow, that is kind of like some, 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 some reaction that's been kind of revelatory or maybe that's too big of a word. But. No, um... Not really. <laughs> Not really, yeah. I think, I mean, maybe it just, maybe, I, I, I don't know if I anticipated that it would spur um, as many discussions about faith as I've been encountering. Yeah. I, th I think I... I envisioned, not necessarily that this is what I wanted, but um, or only this, but I was envisioning more conversations around the idea of consent yeah. and and um, abuse and agency and those gray areas. And yeah. we are definitely having those conversations, and that's a you know that is a big part of the film. Um, yeah. But yeah, the the discussions about faith as well and 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 relationships with God. Um, was yeah. I think less expected, and I've been really excited by. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I really believe that that there's, I, I don't know, maybe parallel is too strong of a word, but this this idea of like faith and and the expression of it versus sort of love and desire and the agency consent of it, I think I think they 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 both hold this kind of sort of gray area. Where yeah, I mean, God can be in her desires too, yeah, right? Yeah. And 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 God can be in her making mistakes and learning about herself and and that's all 
God can be in all of those actions and discoveries, you know? Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love it. I love it. It's incredible. Um, I, I mean, I could talk to you all day about all this, like, because I, I really do believe, or or I am, I'm not that I believe, like, I just kept coming back to that with the movie and that this, there was some, the way that love and desire and how it how it how it becomes this sort of immoral kind of this this bad thing in the movie this bad relationship and the abuse of it and the sort of the the the, the this extreme society that that labels it as wrong it 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 really felt like to me it's sort of there's a universality to it that extends to just just beliefs and just like how we try to make sense of the world and you you're yeah and ourselves and ourselves right? and it's yeah. like it's really ultimately yeah you know the film deal, deals with big themes and questions of faith and abuse and consent and but at the end of the day it's really to me is about searching for yourself and finding yourself and what you believe in the face of all of the expectations that the world places on you, yeah, you know, and yeah. and anybody can relate to that. And, yeah, no, and that, the freedoms and the dangers that that brings. Yeah, that's beautifully said. And when you were saying, I'm the surprise of sort of like how much the discussion turns towards faith. I think that's kind of basically what it is. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As we become a more secular society and sort of we have to, there there has to be some replacement in how we sort of what we make, how we make sense of this mm -hmm. and ourselves in relation to the world, yeah, you know, and these big, agree. bigger questions. So it doesn't, it, it, you know, that, that it, it's, it's a beautiful sort of timely movie and that's in many ways because of that. So that's really thank cool. You. But anyway, that, thank you. It's cool to talk to you. Yeah, cool to talk to you too. <laughs> oh, good luck with everything. Thank and you. Um, everybody go check out The Starling Girl. It's amazing. I watch it twice. <laughs> uh, I'll watch it a third time in theaters. Anyway, it was awesome to meet you. You too. Laurel. Yeah, thank you for a thank beautiful you. movie. Thank it's great. You.